When killer bees launch an attack, it is often explosive and relentless. No longer the stuff of horror movies, killer bees are on the move and perhaps coming to a city near you. This is a huge, huge hive. Hundreds of thousands of them. So far, scientists have been powerless to stop them. They can be after you for hours. Experts advise, learn to live with them or suffer the deadly consequences of coming face to face with a lethal swarm. Los Angeles, California, best known for its trendy hangouts, movie stars, and sandy beaches. The same sunny climate that draws millions of visitors each year has also brought millions of Africanized bees, better known as killer bees. All eight counties in densely populated Southern California have been officially colonized. Presently about 60% of all the bees in Los Angeles County are Africanized. We project that within two to three years, it'll be 100%. Angelinos aren't the only ones threatened by these deadly insects. Anyone living in a hot, sun-drenched climate where killer bees thrive is potentially at risk. And while all bees sting, not all bees are branded as killers. Basically, the difference between Africanized bees and European bees is the difference between a domestic animal and a wild animal. We're gonna save them. Originally from Africa, killer bees are the more aggressive cousins of the European bee, which is the common honey bee we know today. To the naked eye, they are nearly identical in appearance, although the killer bee is actually slightly smaller. But it's the killer bee's highly defensive nature that really sets them apart. Killer bees are capable of launching highly defensive, ferocious attacks, seemingly without reason. They sting in far greater numbers, chase victims farther, and are more easily provoked than the relatively docile honeybees we are used to. More and more news stories chronicle these potentially deadly encounters. They chase five of us from this end of the roof down to the other end of the roof. Tucson, Arizona. Workers doing repairs on the roof of this building were stung around 40 times each. They were unaware a large colony of killer bees had established a hive nearby. It was scary. Everybody was hiding and screaming. I never seen nothing like it. So what do you do to see some bees? Ten-year-old Kevin Johns was stung more than 100 times on Arizona's A Mountain. He had been hiking with a group of friends. All these bees just came flying at me, and they were all in my face trying to sting me, and they stung me on my head and neck. From Bogota, Colombia, come these images of a town under siege. Pest control workers use smoke, a proven calming agent, to escort frightened children and their parents to safety after killer bees go on the rampage. This Afghanized bee problem is, is largely an urban problem, and that's because the cities are where there is plenty of food resource for the bees, blooming plants, nectar and pollen, nesting sites, and, and available water. And they need all three in order to survive. Los Angeles County Vector Control is an agency charged with managing troublesome insects. Robert Savisquez is executive director. During the year 2000, we received over 6,000 calls concerning Africanized honeybees. We actually removed swarms or hives at approximately 3,000 of those locations. The queen of the hive. Oh, looks like you have. Just a few years ago, Vector Control's primary concern was mosquito control. Now it's abating killer bees. It's Monday morning. When you see us, enter the truck. A call has come in to remove a hive discovered in a heavily populated business district. Mark Brooks oversees all field work. Robert, we have a beehive in Century City. Mm -hmm. It's a vacant lot and it's in a bush, and apparently it's a very large hive. Okay, I'll back you up on this. Any, any questions? No. Nope. Okay, are you guys ready to go? Yeah, here you go. Mark and the vector control crew prepare to tackle what is reportedly the biggest hive they have yet to encounter. And it's right in the heart of Tinseltown. It's supposed to be an extremely large hive. 
and these kind of hives are always tricky in that the hive is percolated throughout the uh, bush, so it's not an open situation. I'm going to have to do some type of uh, evaluation once we get out there on how to treat it. At this point, the crew has no way of knowing whether this hive could be home to a lethal swarm. Killer bees are on the move and expanding into new territory at an alarming rate. The bees reached the U.S.-Mexican border in 1990, crossing first into Texas. Three years later, they made it to Arizona. In the 11 years since their arrival, killer bees have colonized every state bordering Mexico plus Nevada, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Some experts predict that in a few short years, killer bees will be the only bees populating the southernmost portion of the United States. Africanized honeybees in an urban area creates a much more significant and immediate problem. One hive, one swarm can affect hundreds, whereas in other areas and in less populated states and cities, maybe you're only going to have four or five people that can be affected by it. Few people understand that fear better than the residents of this Tucson, Arizona neighborhood. It was a late Tuesday afternoon in February. A colony of killer bees was living inside the chimney of this single family home. How long they'd been there is uncertain, but on this day, something set them off. It was truly what I would describe as the scene out of a horror movie. We turned the corner on our engine company, people running in the road, flailing about, trying to wave bees off of them, screaming, just utter pandemonium. I was getting my mail, looking around, and boom, the bee came on. And all these bees started coming all over. And started, I ran all the way home. Joe Malou was just arriving home. I, I had gloves on with my motorcycle, I was smashing them. I couldn't get them off me. They chased me probably about a block down the road. The noise from the motorcycle engine had further aggravated the already angry bees. I took my shirt, I tried waving them off. So I was covered in them. And as people were coming out of the house, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong? They were getting attacked as they were standing by me. I was delivering mail that day, and I felt the first one in my hair. At first, I just thought it was just one or two, and I ran around the vehicle, but they followed me. Desperate, she ran to a nearby house looking for help. No one was home. It was, it was very scary. I, I was just hoping that it didn't fall. I was just going, please don't fall. Nearby, young Roman Duran was also in peril. A teenage neighbor came to Roman's rescue. He hosed the boy down with water to dislodge the stinging insects. Then he spotted Dina. They were calling for me. I ran over to them. I mean, that's, that was just like my mindset, is just to get to them, because they're willing to help me. You know, and after that, you know, it was like. <sighs> Even the neighborhood animals were under attack. It was just, it was awful. There was, they were just flying around in circles. You could hear them crashing into the, into the uh, sliding glass door. And then I looked down and there was my dogs just covered, covered from head to toe. The dogs had been trapped in a fenced yard, unable to escape. We suited up, we got in there with a hose line and a foam pack. We foamed them off, killed the bees, carried them out to the front. One dog that was estimated that it was stung well over a thousand times, the veterinarian that I spoke with stopped counting basically after they pulled so many st stingers out of each dog. This attack would go on record as one of the largest in the United States. Eleven people were stung that day. All made full recovery. However, Brandy and Willie were not as lucky. But killer bees haven't always lived among us. This alien species was given a lift. Honeybees are not native to the Americas. The common bee, which we know today, was first brought to our shores from Europe in the 1600s by early settlers to the New World. 
These European bees flourished in the temperate climate of North America, but failed to thrive in South America's tropical heat. The first bees from Africa were brought over to Brazil in the mid-1950s by a scientist who was interested in, in improving the uh, keeping of bees in South America and the, the concept was that they would bring bees in from a tropical area and that those bees would do well in the tropics of South America. And he brought them over and they did quite well. Perhaps a little too well. The bees escaped quarantine and began breeding with local Brazilian honeybees. These African bees and their hybrid offspring, known as Africanized bees, quickly spread throughout the tropics of South America, into Central America, Mexico, and now the southern United States. In Europe, beekeepers had bred their bees for centuries for traits beneficial to beekeeping. This included high honey production and a gentle disposition that made them easy to work around. This simply wasn't the case with the bees in Africa. The bees brought over from Africa were largely unselected bees, that is to say, as wild as nature has created them. In their native habitat, African bees had many natural predators and over time developed highly sophisticated defensive skills necessary for survival in the wild. Dr. Erickson has witnessed firsthand the changes in Arizona's bee population since the killer bees first came to town. The genes for Africanized bees can be found in nearly all bees in southern Arizona now. I think the feral population here is almost entirely Africanized. I, it's probably over 95%. Some of the meanest bees in Arizona are kept in the Silver Bells apiary north of Tucson. Here, Dr. Erickson and other scientists from the Carl Hayden Bee Research Center do something no one in their right mind would ever want to do incite a swarm of angry killer bees. If you disturb one of these extremely defensive Africanized colonies, half the colony, perhaps 40 to 60 percent of the bees will come out in the attack mode at one time. And that means you've got anywhere from five to 15,000 bees in the air, and they'll be out in about 15 seconds. So you have a very short period of time to react. Their venom is no more potent than the ordinary honeybees. It's the number of stings which make them so lethal once disturbed, colonies may remain agitated for 24 hours, attacking people and animals within a range of a quarter mile from the hive. This device, aptly named the temper tester, registers just how many times the bees in this very aggressive colony will sting. It is not necessary to disturb the hive itself to initiate a killer bee attack. In fact, they're known to respond to mundane, everyday occurrences. Two things that offend bees most are sound and vibrations and breath, mammalian breath, an abnormal uh, sound or physical disturbance of the nest. So lawnmowers, weed whackers, that sort of thing can get the bees excited. So those are the two things that will set them off most often. In Los Angeles, an apprehensive vector control crew arrives on site. A maintenance worker has reported a large beehive hanging from a tree branch in this vacant lot. Why don't we go uh, take a look at it, then we'll decide how we want to handle it. All right. Okay. Let's so look at it from down here. It's about the safer from a distance. What they discover is astonishing. This is a huge, huge hive. The hive appears to be at least four feet tall, weighing around 100 pounds a solid mass of buzzing bees. The trick will be deciding how to remove it without triggering a massive attack that could kill. We're gonna go get suited up right now. Once we get in there, we'll diagnose how we wanna handle this hive. It's extremely large, one of the largest hives I've seen in quite a while, actually. Well, with it being intermingled throughout that bush, it's gonna be a challenge, to say the least. Do you know what to do if you live in killer bee country and discover a hive? The answer is coming up. If you live in killer bee country and discover a hive, never attempt to remove it yourself. Bring children, the elderly, and pets indoors. Then call a professional bee removal service. It's Monday morning in Los Angeles. 
The towering high-rises of Century City are filled with office workers, and an open-air shopping center of exclusive retail stores is only a block away. Amidst it all, in this vacant lot, a large colony of bees has set up housekeeping. LA Vector Control is on the scene. Because they cannot confirm visually whether these are killer bees, every precaution must be taken. The men put on their protective suits made of an extra tough polyester fiber, which makes them impervious to bee stings. Next, they get to work, cutting away at the brush to expose the hive. That's a big hive. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them in there. Even our cameras are not immune from attack. Honeycomb. See the honey at the end? You can see the comb at the top here, here. And there's also going to be comb all the way down at the bottom as well. Anytime you see a hive this big, you know that it's been here for quite a while. I would say at least a year to, to see it at this level. It, it, it could be years even. This is a huge, huge hive. It's hundreds of thousands of them. The decision is made to remove the hive in its entirety without the use of chemicals. The crew believes this will cause the least disturbance to the bees. Should they become overly agitated, this could quickly turn into a full-blown attack. The colony will be brought back to the lab at Vector Control, where it can be studied. Until then, they still have no way of knowing what kind of bees they're handling. We are going to put uh, these huge bags underneath the bottom of the hive and actually go from the bottom of the hive with the uh, bag all the way up to the top of the hive. In, all right? okay, grab that side, Ned. And then we're going to physically clip the branch that the bees are congested on. Okay. That is our plan of attack at this point. Nice and easy. The tension Good. builds as more and more bees pour out of the hive. It's a surefire sign of aggression, as well as an indication that these bees could indeed be killers. Boy, I wish you could feel this bag vibrate. Now if it does break, we'll just slowly lower it to the ground. It's got some weight on it here. Yeah. Yeah, Hold the bag real quick. Hold the bag. Yeah, You're almost through. Okay, yeah, set it down. Set it down. Set it down. All right. The crew has safely bagged the 100 pound hive. Now only a garbage bag stands between them and what could be as many as a quarter million bees. And they're still very much alive. All right, where's it? As a final step, traps are hung at the site of the former colony to attract and kill any remaining airborne bees. Before leaving, the crew cordons off the area to keep people out. Definite life signs. We noticed beverage containers, uh, tennis balls, that kind of thing, which does show one that uh, this area has been, uh, shall we say, populated one way or another. Quite fortunate that there wasn't a uh, stinging incident here. These are some of the bee stings that the camera had received. Where the stingers are actually embedded into the camera strap. The colony is taken back to the lab at Vector Control, where it'll be frozen overnight in order to kill the bees. 24 hours later, it is ready to be examined. Lab workers have their first chance to get an up-close view of the hive. It's pretty big, huh? Okay, let's get in here and get some good samples, get one with good wings. Next, Tests will be run to determine whether these are the dreaded killer bees. So wings are removed and they're measured under a microscope. Depending on how big they are, how small they are, we get a percentile of probability of whether these bees are the Africanized or European. This technique is called the FABIS test, or Fast Africanized Honeybee Identification System. It's a big hive, probably about 150,000 bees in there. A wingspan of less than 10 millimeters is all that differentiates these nearly identical bees. 
Within hours, they have the results on the Century City Hive. This hive was on its way to becoming Africanized. It's already being converted. Uh, the percentage of European bees are dropping off and the percentage of Africanized bees are increasing. So it wouldn't be too long before we would see this hive uh, completely turned over into Africanized and the aggressive traits of all these bees would dramatically increase from what we saw. 77-year-old Toha Besarub of Las Vegas, Nevada knows firsthand what can happen when a killer beehive is allowed to go unchecked. She was the victim of one of the most dramatic killer bee attacks in recent memory. It happened not far from her home, five miles off the Las Vegas Strip. She had simply been walking down the street, carrying a shopping bag and drinking orange juice. Then out of nowhere, thousands of killer bees came swooping out of the sky and began their violent attack. The bees were probably attracted to that citrus smell. She was also wearing a wig which was brown. It's a predator color and they don't like it. You think that some of those bees got caught up in the wig? She smashed one of the bees. When she did that, she released the pheromone from the bee. She's about 20, 30 feet away from the hive. I figured it was just a routine call, you know, a couple of bees flying around somebody. Didn't think much of it. Got around the corner, and then we see this person sitting in the middle of the median. Didn't know if, she was, if it was a man or a lady. There just hundreds and hundreds of bees. You couldn't see skin. Her face was bees, masses of bees. Toha Basarub received more than 500 stings. Amazingly, she survived her terrifying ordeal. The hive was later found in a tree 20 feet from where the attack began. The entire trunk was filled with honey. The degree to which a colony will defend itself is one area of active study. Researchers break it up into three specific behaviors. The three tasks that we can identify that are involved in colony defense are guarding behavior, pursuing behavior or chasing us, and stinging behavior. Almost all bees will exhibit some form of defensive behavior. Killer bees take it to the extreme. But researchers have found something even more disturbing. And that's how quickly docile bees turn mean when killer bees move into the neighborhood. Do you know how to survive a killer bee attack? There are four things you should know that could save your life. These tips when we return. If killer bees attack, there are four rules to follow which could save your life. Run away as fast as you can. Cover your head. And seek shelter, such as inside a house or car. Whatever you do, do not jump in water. Killer bees will wait for you to surface. Long Beach, California. Virgil Foster had been a hobby beekeeper for most of his 83 years and always kept several hives in his suburban backyard. After conducting a routine check of his hives, he left three of them uncovered. The sound of his lawnmower incited the bees. When he pushed the lawnmower over there by him, it was an instantaneous vortex of bees, you know, a big tornado of bees. The quickest one I ever seen, the biggest one I ever seen, because there was three hives lined up there. Virgil's son, Kevin, had been around the corner, also doing yard work. I ran around to the front of the garage, grabbed the air compressor hose, tried to blow the bees off of him. It worked for about a second, because almost immediately, the, the bees were trying to attack the tip of the blowgun. And then they're just following it around like that. And finally, I'm getting hit. Kevin was stung 35 times trying to rescue his father. Despite his efforts, Virgil Foster became the first person in California to die from an Africanized bee attack. DNA tests later confirmed that his docile honey bee hives had been taken over by killer bees. The most common way killer bees take over a European colony is through mating, and they seem to have the advantage in this reproductive process. The queen bee controls the genetics of the hive. She flies out early in life and mates with as many as 20 different male bees called drones. 
She uses the sperm, which is stored in a pouch within her body, to produce offspring for the rest of her life, which is about two years. Now, she's mated with a lot of drones that are African, and if she has some African characteristics as well, then most of the bees, the offspring in that colony, are going to be uh, carrying the genes for this high extreme defensive behavior. Dr. Greg Hunt of Purdue University helped isolate several so-called killer bee mean genes specifically linked to killer bee aggression. There seems to be at least four genes that we've identified that are part of this aggressive or defensive behavior. One of these genes that influences stinging behavior seems to be genetically dominant. This discovery helped to explain why once docile honeybee colonies turned so mean so fast. We find that the hybrid bees are about as aggressive or defensive, we would say, as the Africanized honeybees themselves. They sting just as much, they chase us just as much, and they cause us just as much problems. The field research for these studies is done thousands of miles from the Purdue University campus in Extapan de la Sol, 80 miles southwest of Mexico City. The area is nearly 100% populated by Africanized bees. Almost 400 people have died in Mexico in less than 15 years as a result of stinging incidents involving killer bees. Scientists hope to gain insight from these tragic losses. Bees are there. You can see some of the hives there. That's the lab. Dr. Ernesto Guzman Novoa is the other half of this research team. He studies honeybee behavior for the Mexican equivalent of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The governments of Mexico and the United States are interested in killer bees because they are just one of tens of thousands of non-native species the most invasive of which cause billions of dollars a year in damage to our agricultural industries. Here, Dr. Guzman Novoa and his team of researchers work with some of the most aggressive bees in North America. They want to learn more about the way killer bees organize their colony defense when launching their lethal attacks. A colony of bees is a social hierarchy made up of a single queen, hundreds of male drones, and thousands of worker bees. The worker bees are sterile females who do everything within the hive except lay eggs and mate. They take care of the brood, gather pollen and nectar, as well as guard the entrance to the hive. Uh, here we can take a look at this uh, hive where we have painted bees to study guardian behavior. Look at this white one. She's running, she's running and touching bees. This one, she is a guard. See, they open their wings and patrol the entrance, actually inspecting the incoming workers. If this, they smell like their nest, they let them in. If they don't smell like their nest, they reject them, pull them out, grab them out of the hive. Researchers hope to gain a better understanding of the connection between guarding and attacks on humans. Look at this guy's fighting there. You see? The bees stand guard like bouncers at a bar, deciding who will be allowed to enter and who gets turned away. The reason for this is because in times of scarcity, when there's no nectar or pollen around, and there are times of the year when that happens, uh, honeybees try to rob the honey and the pollen stores from other colonies. These studies reveal that the Africanized bees guard nearly twice as long as European bees. The killer bees used in these experiments are kept far away from the research lab. We don't want mean bees near us in the lab. We want the mean bees to be as uh, far away from us as possible. And the same colony can be very calm and handy one day and the next day it will be quite aggressive. That's a characteristic of Africanized bees. Stinging and chasing are without a doubt the two most frightening and dangerous aspects of killer bee defense. Researchers put themselves in the middle of an angry swarm to study its dynamics. We call it the flag test. What we do is we wave a letter patch 
on top of the bars of this uh, aggressive hive for 20 seconds. Now, Pepe, ahora, hazlo. And then we'll do it for 20 seconds. You see how agitated the bees get. These are angry Africanized bees. Stop it. Yeah, we put the flag inside that plastic bag uh, so that no more bees sting the patch after 20 seconds. The researchers with nerves of steel calmly walk away with the bees in hot pursuit. The idea is to see how far these bees will follow their victims once an attack begins. At 25 meters, we start capturing, uh, pursuing bees. Now we walk 25 more meters to count the rest of the bee. There will be another person with another net. The researchers continue their retreat. The bees show no sign of stopping. As you can see, they really get really mean. They can be after you for hours. Yes, hours. It is In fact, killer bees have been known to give chase for up to a half mile or more, or around 800 meters. Similar tests with European bees show they give up much sooner, somewhere between 100 and 300 feet. Okay, now let's do some sting counts here. Next, they count the number of stingers in the leather patch. Right, right now here we can say there are at least 60 stings left on each, each side of this patch. That's more than 100 stings left in 20 seconds. I mean, an animal or a person have more stinging surface than this small letter patch. So an animal or a person with no protection would have re received hundreds of stings in this 20 seconds. And an average person requires about 800 stings to die. And that doesn't take long with an Africanized colony which is angry. A bee stings only once and then it dies. However, as it stings, it releases a scent known as an alarm pheromone, which signals other bees from the hive to join in the attack. To test a hive's reaction at the moment an attack begins, researchers introduce an alarm pheromone at the entrance of a hive containing both European and Africanized bees. See how bees respond to the alarm pheromone? It's only 15 seconds. Photographs taken before and after the experiment record the number of bees responding to the stimulus. Tests like this one confirm the killer bee's bad boy behavior is rubbing off. They've coerced their normally easygoing nest mates into stinging in far greater numbers than they ever would have on their own. Now we need some smoke. A riot mentality appears to have taken over the hive, offering proof that the tendency to sting isn't controlled by genetics alone. There seems to be an environmental influence at work here as well. If you're stung by a bee, do you know the safest way to remove a stinger? Hint, it's probably not what you think. If you are stung by a bee, remove the stinger as quickly as possible. The safest way is to scrape it out using a credit card or fingernail. The squeezing motion of tweezers or your fingers will pump the venom deeper into your flesh. The really remarkable thing about the Africanized bees, aside from their sort of strong defensive behavior, which is a thing that most people associate with them, is the fact that following an introduction in the 1950s in South America, they've been able to spread at an enormous rate, um, 100 kilometers a year or more, um, northward and finally reaching the United States. There's no doubt that killer bees have been able to successfully take over the local bee population wherever they go. This is due in large part to their amazing reproductive abilities, both genetically and at the colony level. A swarm is a colony's way of reproducing. When a hive grows too large to support itself, 
it rears a new queen. The old queen and about half the workers leave the nest to start a new colony. These bees in transition are known as a swarm and will cluster together until they find a new home. European bees generally swarm only once a year in the springtime. Not so with killer bees. The Africanized bees are not as seasonal in their swarming, so they're more, whenever they get crowded, they're likely to begin to rear queens and to cast a swarm, and possibly more than one swarm at once. This almost constant swarming allows the Africanized bee to build up its numbers in the wild more quickly. 1,000 colonies can become as many as 22,000 colonies in the span of a year. In some places, there are as many as 200 nests per square mile. The greater the number of bees, the more likely you are to encounter them. We've always had some bees there, but I paid no attention to them much. They, they never bothered them. Noel Kincaid of Las Cruces, New Mexico, had been trying to kill off a hive of pesky wasps when he disturbed not one, but four colonies of Africanized honeybees. His wife and eight-year-old great-granddaughter were nearby. The little kid was trying to pull a tooth out of this here cow head here, just standing there. They started to walk off, and about that time I heard them holler, and I got out here, and they was covered up with bees. I, you couldn't fight them all. Noel grabbed the water hose and started spraying. I uh, got the little kid and got her in the house and got them off of her and got back out here and my wife was laying there passed out. His wife's body couldn't take the shock of so many bee stings. Within half an hour, she was dead. And like I say, I've been in emergencies and everything before and I always thought I handled it good, but I lost this one. Louise Kincaid was New Mexico's first killer bee-related death. Knowing when killer bees fly into new territory can be key to preventing such tragedies. In Texas, where the first U.S. killer bee death occurred in 1991, they've developed a rigorous system for keeping track of these fast-moving insects. Hundreds of miles of bee traps dot the Texas landscape, running up and down the state's highways. Paul Jackson is chief apiary inspector for the state of Texas. The swarm has landed. They landed all around the front, stay there for some time, and then the queen probably went on inside where the pheromone is and took up housekeeping. Today, he's found a colony in East Texas. The bees on the outside appear to be a little small in size. So that's the indication that it's a possibility it could be Africanized bees. The bees are destroyed so they can be positively identified. When killer bees are discovered in a new area, the public is alerted and the county put under quarantine. The quarantine allows beekeepers to move bees within, but not out of a quarantine zone. Roughly half a million bee colonies are moved through Texas every year on their way to pollinate crops around the country. One third of the U.S. food supply is dependent on these pollinators. Many believe the beekeeper is the last defense against the killer bee infestation. Binford Weaver and his family own one of the largest and oldest commercial beekeeping operations in the United States. There is a real concern that our customers will decide, oh, they're in Texas, and Africanized bees are in Texas, therefore I can't buy bees from them because they might be Africanized. Killer bees are just one in a series of hardships plaguing modern beekeepers. In recent years, they've endured dropping honey prices due to imports, as well as an infestation of varroa mites, a so far uncontrollable bug which decimates honeybees. Although Mr. Weaver's business is right in the heart of killer bee country, so far his county remains uncolonized. We keep Africanized bees out first by keeping a good check on our colonies, and if, they, if there is a colony that shows any aggression, well, we will go in and find that queen, kill her, and introduce our gentle stock queen. And then it will become a regular colony of bees and not be Africanized anymore. Despite the diligent efforts of individual beekeepers to keep Africanized bees out of their managed colonies, there is little man can do to control killer bees in the wild. The way I like to leave it is, you cannot stop Mother Nature from taking a natural course. We can monitor it, 
tell you where direction it's going. We can ease it to some degree by taking out the hot spots, but we're not stopping it. The introduction of the African bees can be likened to the opening of Pandora's box. There's no going back. But there are ways we can minimize the danger if we find ourselves in the midst of a lethal swarm. Dogs are frequent killer bee victims. Do you know how to protect them from a lethal swarm? The answer is just ahead. How do you protect your dog from a lethal swarm? Provide a safe escape route. A dog door leading inside your home or garage could save your pet's life. For many of us, our homes serve as a refuge, a place to feel safe from the world. Unfortunately, they are also some of the best places for killer bees to build a hive. Thinking like a killer bee can help you bee-proof your home. Dr. Kurt Vischer has some tips. Here's an example over here. Uh, these stored flower pots are about the right size, particularly this one for European bees, but African bees might be interested even in the smaller ones. It would be a simple matter either to just turn them on their side, now we have a wide open entrance, the bees will no longer be interested in it, or simply turn them right side up and so forth. So, so any sort of cavity that you can simply make no longer an enclosed cavity as simply as that, that's probably the easiest thing to do. Patrol your property at least once a month, looking up and around. Generally when houses are built, as you can see here, the vents that are necessary to provide ventilation in the attic space are screened up. But in some cases one might find that the screening is of a relatively large mesh size that has holes big enough to readily admit bees, in which case it would be better to replace it with a smaller screening. Over here we can see where a pipe is penetrating the house. And this one seems to have some space around it, which is big enough to possibly for a bee to get in. So what I'll do is to take a little piece of screening and simply jam it into that hole tightly enough that it will stay in there in such a way that all of the possible entrances for a bee are going to be closed up by the screening. Here's one potentially attractive bee cavity that nearly every urban home is going to have, namely the water meter box. As you can see, if you lift off the cover, what's underneath is a cavity of variable size, but often big enough, at least for Africanized bees, to live in. And the holes of these typically have a hole that's about the right size for a number of bees to pass through at once. These turn out to be quite attractive cavities for bees to nest in. The options for dealing with that probably mostly involve sealing up the hole in some way so that you can still get the cover off but when the bees try to crawl down in to investigate the cavity, they don't see it, or they can't get in. The truly scary fact about killer bees is that no matter how careful we are, how many precautions we take, you can be at risk almost anywhere, like a ball game. An early season matchup between the San Diego Padres and the Los Angeles Dodgers is put on hold after a large swarm of bees lands on the outfield scoreboard. Play is halted for nearly an hour while fans and the bleachers are moved to new seats and out of harm's way. Officials have no way of knowing whether these are killer bees. With such a huge crowd, they're not willing to take any chances. We have situations where if these bees attach to the side of an apartment house, we may have a few hundred people immediately in that area. And if they become very aggressive, the uh, situation can intensify very quickly. At the same time, hiking trails, equestrian trails, even golf courses are perfect places for them to settle. No doubt you are more at risk in the great outdoors. Dr. Eric Erickson has some advice that could save your life. He found that in killer bee colonies, a handful of bees are on constant patrol, covering about a 30-yard radius around their hives. If you enter that zone, those bees will begin headbutting you. They're not trying to sting you. They just, uh, they're just running into you with their heads, and they'll bounce off of you like little ping pong balls. You'll think that you're being attacked, that you're going to be stung, but you won't. Extreme slow motion video confirms this behavior. If you're out hiking, for example, and you run into a situation where bees begin bouncing off of you like that, you should know that you've entered the territory of a, a pretty nasty colony 
and you should just turn around and leave the way you came. And if you do that, uh, you'll there will be no further harm. By all accounts, the killer bee is a super bee, built for survival and so far is the undeniable victor in the biology wars. Where or when killer bees will end their expansion remains to be seen. Will they head east to Louisiana or Florida, where they're perfectly suited to the tropical heat? Or continue heading north, perhaps settling next into Utah? As killer bees continue to conquer new land, we must all adapt to life with this unwelcome new predator, or risk a deadly encounter with a lethal swarm.